Good morning. Welcome to Morning Prayer on Wednesday the 21st of July. You find me once again sat out in the garden, admittedly in a suit, which is rather unusual, but I'm at work. Um, but otherwise enjoying a balmy, glorious British summer. So we have certainly a lot to be grateful for, despite the uh, turbulence around the uh, um, lifting of restrictions. So, let's offer our thoughts to the Lord. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Blessed are you, creator of all. To you be praise and glory forever. As your dawn renews the face of the earth, bringing light and life to all creation, may we rejoice in this day you have made. As we wake refreshed from the depths of sleep, Open our eyes to behold your presence, and strengthen our hand to do your will, that the world may rejoice and give you praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Now our psalm today is Psalm 119. I am going to take this from the first verse through to 16, I think. That will give us plenty to reflect on, I'm sure. Blessed are those whose way is pure, who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his testimonies and seek him with their whole heart. Those who do no wickedness but walk in his ways. You, O Lord, have charged that we should diligently keep your commandments. Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes. O oh, that my ways were made so direct that I might keep your statutes. Then... Should I not be put to shame, because I have regard for all of your commandments? I will thank you with an unfeigned heart, when I have learned your righteous judgments. I will keep your statutes. O oh, for forsake me not utterly. Teach me, O oh Lord, the way of your statutes. How shall young people cleanse their way, to keep themselves according to your word? With my whole heart have I sought you. Oh, let me not go astray from your commandments. Your words have I hidden within my heart, that I should not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Oh, teach me your statutes. Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes. With my lips have I been telling of all the judgments of your mouth. I have taken great delight in the ways of your testimonies than in all manner of riches. I will meditate on your commandments and contemplate your ways. My delight shall be in your statutes and I shall not forget your words. Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes. Faithful God, let your word be the treasures of our hearts that we may delight in your truth and walk in the glorious liberty of your Son, Jesus Christ. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. I think it's a great verse. I will meditate on your commandments, and contemplate your ways. And it really encapsulates what we're doing this morning. Now for our scripture reading, this is the final in our series on Acts. Acts has 28 chapters and Robin has written a reflection on each chapter of Acts, which we've been reading over the past few weeks. And here we are, chapter 28. So we're going to do this from verse 23 through to 31. They arranged to meet Paul on a certain day and came in even larger numbers to the place where he was staying. He witnessed to them from morning till evening, explaining about the kingdom of God, and from the law of Moses and from the prophets he tried to persuade them about Jesus. Some were convinced by what he said, but others would not believe. 
they disagreed among themselves and began to leave after Paul had made his final statement. The Holy Spirit spoke the truth to your ancestors when he said through Isaiah the prophet, Go to this people and say, You will be ever hearing, but never understanding. You will be ever perceive you, you will be ever seeing but never perceiving. For this people's hearts have become calloused. They hardly hear with their ears, and they have closed their eyes. Otherwise they might see with their eyes and hear with their ears, understanding with their hearts, and turn and I would heal them. Therefore I want you to know that God's salvation has been sent to the Gentiles, and they will listen. For two whole years, Paul stayed there in his own rented house and welcomed all who came to see him. He proclaimed the kingdom of God and taught about the Lord Jesus Christ with all boldness and without hindrance. Um, I'm sure you might have had an opportunity to read Robin's uh, reflection. Uh, he concludes with the uh, question, I'm not sure that today's church has quite got this uh, Pauline commitment to proclamation. What do you think? I think this chapter from Acts finds the gospel story at a really, really interesting juncture. Effectively, you've had the gospel um, which takes place in an outpost of the Roman Empire and now it's navigated and crossed through right up into Rome itself, the very heart and center of the empire. And we're at a really key point for the faith. Um, obviously, as we, Paul, Paul wouldn't have realized this, but as we, as we now know, Christianity is adopted as the official faith of the uh, of the Roman Empire, and that leads to its massive expansion and, and spreading throughout Europe, and then and then beyond even that. And you just feel that in, in these in these in these chapters, it's just on the cusp of that. And we don't we we it, the the chapter doesn't talk about Paul's death. We assume he was put to death by the Romans, but that isn't. That isn't uh, touched upon or explained here. And we're just at a tipping point. And I sometimes wonder when we think about whether we've got people with this poor same level of commitment. Maybe we're at another tipping point in the, in the Christian story again. And obviously Christianity has been at the heart of so many Western societies for so many years, and that is, is really starting to change. Where we've seen in Acts where the Christian faith moves from being the outsider to being on the cusp of being on the inside, and we know it steps into being a sort of center of power. And now we're at a point where I suppose faith is seen as a, as a marginalized thing, uh, certainly in Western western cultures and maybe just a sort of nice thing you do on a sunday not really the sort of core of your very being um and obviously for paul this was all so fresh he'd met jesus on the damascus road and it was also new and so raw and i think the challenge for us when robin asks about do we have that commitment it almost feels like we have to discover a new language sometimes to talk about these things. The so many of the language we already have is beautiful and, 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 and very engaging, but it's so familiar that certainly people who are, don't know about these things can automatically shut down as soon as they hear expressions they've heard so many times before. You know what it's like to be saved and um, language they might consider trite Christian thought. So I think that's the... I'm not really sure whether it's necessarily a question of whether we, we lack Paul's commitment, though obviously Paul was very committed. He was quite a quarrelsome, difficult man, I think, sometimes. But, he, you know, he's a great example. And obviously you can only imagine how you know, what a powerhouse of a, uh, of a personality he, he must have been. But it's that we're at a different point in the story. And it's a different way to talk about these things. And that, I think, is the, is the great challenge for us.
But I certainly do know one person who I think is does have the Pauline commitment proclamation, and that is um, uh, the Reverend uh, Canon Robin Gamble. Um, he has given us such a, a rich gift with his Jesus 100 series, um, and now obviously his, his series on Acts. And this coming Sunday will be his last service with us at Carvley. Um, he's um, he's meant certainly so much uh, to so many of us, certainly me from a personal perspective. He has helped me on with um, uh, my journey. It's hard to believe that when Robin joined the church, I hadn't even preached for the first time. And, um, you know, he's encouraged me on and guided me through so many things and, uh, you know, shaped my spiritual life. And he's just been great. Um, and as he leaves us at Carfley, you know, he's, he's got so many other roles within the church anyway. Uh, so it would be good for him to be able to dedicate himself once again fully to those. Um, but um, I think all I can really say is thank you, Robin, for all you've done for us. And... Um, also, obviously, do join us on Sunday for Robin's leaving as well. Um, so now we will uh, offer our prayers of intercession. Lord of hope, we pray for the growth of your church. As your son promised, the water he gives will become a spring of water welling up to eternal life. We ask that you give us confidence now to approach that well. Remind us of our need for this water and help us to draw with joy from that fountain of salvation, flourishing in confidence and strength in our efforts to serve you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord of compassion, we pray for the needs of our community. These are difficult times. There's restrictions left and people are scared. Your prophet Isaiah mourned for the desolation. He cried, the vine withers. The noise of the revelers has stopped. The ruined cities lie desolate. The entrance to every house is barred. Lord, we ask that you keep watch over those at work, those who watch, those who weep. Lord, tend the sick, give rest to the weary, bless the dying, soothe the suffering, pity the afflicted, shield the joyous and all for your love's sake. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. I'll just give you a moment to bring your own thoughts and needs before, before God, before moving on to the collect for today. Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of your name, increase in us true religion, nourish us with all goodness, and of your great mercy keep us in the same, through Jesus Christ your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now say the Lord's Prayer together. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thanks ever so much for joining me this morning. I really hope you have a fabulous Wednesday. And uh, I look forward to hopefully joining you at a uh, morning prayer service soon. And it would be great for you to come along on Sunday to uh, say goodbye to Robin as well. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.